Hi, I'm Fred Crasey and I'm from FKC Health and I'm here with Vu Nguyen. And Vu is known as the healthy man. And why would I say that? Well, his passion is around anti-aging, longevity, optimal health, and living a fulfilling life. And uh, I've known Vu for just on 12 years. And my first encounter 12 years ago was when I decided to make a life change back then. And this young man decided to be the one that was going to punish me hard <laughs> and uh, put me through the paces in the gym. And uh, lo and behold, a lot of weight loss, a lot of muscle gain and uh, levels of fitness that were quite surprising. And having had gone to gyms in the past and always ended up injuring myself and give up, the stint with Vu lasted a long time. And uh, here we are 12 years down the track, ready to jam on our passionate subject. So Vu, I know what's at the top of your list about longevity. Perhaps you can start where you would like to start. Yeah, well, um, you know, it's bring us back a full circle. We started with health and now we're talking about health. Um, so that's really exciting. And, you know, over the last, you know, since I've known you, I've sort of been delving deep um, into this topic. And I guess it's more so led me onto the path of longevity and not just longevity, but achieving optimal health while you live a longer life as well so i guess that's sort of my area of interest and in, and not just an area of interest but things that i'm implementing in, in my everyday life that i've seen great benefit of um and i guess which is um you know the topic of interest today and um yeah it's it's uh wherever you want to get started let's do it i'm, I'm happy to to go in wherever you want to lead it so sure. well my father uh lived to 97 and if he hadn't have taken a fall, he would have cracked 100 easy. But he took mm. a fall and pneumonia took him out. But one of the things I realised is if you're happy in your life, why do you want to stop living? Yes, you get older and you have limitations and things change, but when you really reflect on life, if you've still got your marbles, um, there's so much more to learn, so much more to experience and so much joy to be had in your mature years, but you don't know that until you get there. And that's not true for everybody. So I envisage myself to living to the ripe old age of maybe 130, 150. I think the last check I put was 169. Why not? If it's, if it's going to be out there, it might as well be out there. It's silly to say I'm going to live to 101. You might as well go for it. Now, there are people like Peter Diaminas and Dan Sullivan that talk about in ex exponential wisdom, uh, longevity. So how can we possibly live for 200 years? And that's something I guess will probably perplex a lot of people uh, is that we have the potential to live that long. And, you know, there, there's been pretty much the the verified the oldest verified person is a, a lady named Jean Calment and she lived to 122 years uh that you know there's been people that's been purported that's lived longer you know over 200 years or so like a, a Chinese man um it's only sort of like a myth but then it's it can't be verified here it didn't have any proper documentations or anything like that so mm -hmm. I guess what we're going off is is what's been verified and what's been backed up by scientific studies. And, you know, there's a lot of compelling evidence uh, out at the moment on the ability of extending lifespan, especially in mammals and in mouse. Um, and the reason why they're experimenting on mouse and um, is because for the, the markers that they pretty much want to monitor that has an effect on lifespan on and on health span, you know, we have 97% similarity in mouse and the mouse, you know, they fall under a group um, called mammals, which we are as well. So pretty much in those studies, they have shown that based on the intervention of calorie restriction, 
which is pretty much reducing the amount of calories a person eats, um, you know, anywhere from a 10% restriction to a 65% restriction, uh, extended their lifespan, you know, accordingly. So just based on that sentiment alone, if, you know, your optimal, your highest sort of, uh, you know, age is 120, add another 65% on that because that's what's wow. able to be produced in these experimental models. What does that mean? That means that you're pretty much close, if not you hit the 200 mark. So that's a very, I guess, simplistic summary of how we can achieve that, but there's so much more to it, but it does give us hope that it is a possibility. And there is a lot of different studies to confirm, you know, said studies and, and those sort of interventions that we are, I guess, experimenting with that are extending life at the moment. Well, with the COVID lockdown, one of the uh, things that inspired me to get back online and do the FKC health and do the counselling, coaching, all of that, was a lot of people are facing anxiety and depression. And one of the reasons people feel that, aside from that what's going on, one of the reasons, is they feel that they're running out of time. They're just, they're too old for this, they're too old for that, they're getting old, they're too tired, and the list goes on. I've just, in the last two days, commenced a uh, new diploma. Now, I'm headed up to 68 in Feb. I'm going to devote a year to study. Why not? I've been studying my whole life. But when you think you're going to cark it or pop it, you know, at 75, 80 or 90, you think, well, I just want to enjoy the mature years. And then you see the people walking around their walking frame and everything else. I'm highly active at my age. I get out there and I do a lot of stuff. So when I started to put my timeline out, and I've been doing this for the last 20 years, not as radical as saying 200, but I certainly have popped it up 169. Yeah, I'll take that. Because now the, the streams of possibility are endless. The way I look into life is optimistic. Anxiety and depression don't have a place in my life. Why? I'm having a bad day. I've got the time to sleep it off. I've got the time to reset the goal, the adjustment. And all the dreams that I had that I thought went out the window, they're all back in full force. I... I was online doing what I'm doing now um, in a different way oh, five, six, seven years ago. And I put the pin on it. I didn't want to do it. I'm back. And that five or six years, oh, my God. You know, I, I, I'm doing things like running up hills and, you know, partaking in sports with other people half my age. So... The longevity is like if a footballer tries to kick a goal, he doesn't just aim at the post. He points his toe and his foot way past the centre of that post and keeps it there and follows through. And that's how life should be. You should follow through, you know, your legacy, what you want to leave, and there's never enough time. If there ain't enough hours in the day now, it's never going to change. So if you can put another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years on your life, why, why not do it? Unless, unless you're a sad sack and you're having a miserable time. But maybe you know the endorphins, you know the happy pill. Once you're happy and you're optimistic, you're just on a smorgasbord of life that you never want to stop. So what brought you into the realms of health, particularly the optimal health and longevity? What, what got you there? What, what, what turned your sparks on? I guess very similar to, you know, your sentiment of if you are living a good life and you're enjoying life and you're deriving a large amount of joy from life, then why not extend that? Why not live a longer life? And that all makes sense to me, you know, because for someone that strives on daily challenges, weekly challenges and annual challenges, uh, it brings me a lot of fulfillment and I think it really helps to contribute more towards the world, um, you know, in, in small ways and in larger ways as well. So I guess with all these things in mind, it's like, why wouldn't you want to extend that? Why wouldn't you want to, I guess, prolong that? Um, and I know that there, there'll become a time 
uh, when when my place, I guess, will will um, I guess I will sort of you know disintegrate and then become you know nothing but ashes. But that that time is is not just yet, and you know there's there's not, nothing wrong with forestalling that, and I guess making the most of the life, especially like I said, like the life that you derive so much joy out of. So. You know, with that in mind, um, and and you know, with yourself as well, I can really appreciate that. You know, regardless of your age, still being bright and still being active and still being social, I think that's so important. And a lot of people, you know, their sort of their thinking is that I know another person that's in the sixties. I know another person that's in the seventies. You know, they're miserable. But the thing is, you don't have to be. You know, you can be vibrant, you can be active, you can achieve so much. And I guess that's where my sort of interest lies is that, and my belief is that there is such a thing as a disassociation of the biological age to the chronological age. And I guess that little piece, a lot of people don't get because they just know that, you know, my grandma in her 70s, in her 80s, is fragile, is weak, have all these sort of diseases, is it, you know, um, in a morbid state. So why would I want to prolong that? But I guess my belief is that that doesn't have to be the case at all. You can be a hundred year old person with a body of a 50 year old. And, you know, and that's why I'm so interested in these sort of experiments and science, because it's showing that when you extend life, you're not just extending a morbid and miserable life, you're actually upregulating and improving the health along with it as well. So that means that you get a long and healthy life. And that was just uh, that sort of arena of science is just so exciting for me because it means that, you know, it's like a breakthrough science, but then it's not a quick fix answer as well. It takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of self-experimentation it takes a lot of you know due diligence and also persistence with practice mm-hmm. so that's what sort of really brought me into here is that you know it's all about the journey and that's something that i really want to make the most of and oh, prolong yeah. as much as possible so that, that's sort of what i guess wrapped it up and brought me into health and also uh the the topic of longevity well, one of the interesting things that I found was whilst I was observing my father, he won four world championships when he was uh, 89, 90? No, 91, I think he won some as well, right? National and world championships in swimming. And at 88, he, he was still doing backward somersaults off the side of the pool. At 88, he swam the full length of the pool and three quarters of the way back, underwater, one breath. Now, at his funeral, I've said this in several videos, but it's just so impactful to me. I guess it's his signature. I praised him at his funeral and said he was my mentor, coach and friend, but I said I would like to be at least half the man he was. And then I thought, I've got the internet. I've got all this knowledge. I'm not a drinker or a smoker. Hey, I can be at least that, maybe more. And I started to apply myself and get back into um, business. I'm running a web design business as well for, for the allied health industry and health professionals. And I'm doing this uh, interview work and doing the counseling and coaching and consulting. And I find I'm really happy. Now, Longevity, if you're miserable or you're incarcerated or you're incapacitated in some way, it's not enjoyable. You know, people are not well. I, I sympathise with them deeply and a lot of them want to check out early because they've had enough. Mm-hmm. But I'm also concerned how I feel in the here and now. I'm really concerned because I dragged my sorry bum through life for a few years there because I was neglectful. But, you know, there, there's some really strong pillars or um, strategic ideas around life expansion 
could you tell us a couple of those? Yeah, look, there's um, there's a few things that I guess we can look at that really helps to uh, get give us a better understanding in terms of what are these things that are you know, modulating um, and affecting the pathways that's enabling us to live longer. So one of those things is uh, telomere length. So telomere are pretty much the, the, the chromosomes uh, in your DNA and um, they, they cap your DNA and pretty much the length of your telomere is a pretty good indicator of I guess your lifespan so they've proven that in different you know animal models uh, and in terms of measuring the, the te telomere length and I guess at the rate at which it caps uh, it shortens is pretty much determines the rate of your aging so with that just in mind there's a lot of I guess science literature and experiments that has shown us in terms of what we can do to preserve those telomeres and also what we can do to, I guess, uh, to slow down the, the shortening of those telomeres. And one of those biggest things is, um, you know, what I spoke about already is caloric restriction and also fasting to the most potent anti-aging interventions that anyone can implement to ensure that, I guess, that the telomeres are not shortening uh, excessively and also optimizing uh, all these pathways that will help to elevate your health. So that's one thing. Another thing is also your, uh, the amount of sugar that uh, pretty much circulates in your body. So, and the reason why I guess that is so important uh, when it comes to aging is, for example, someone that is suffering from diabetes, they have an excessive high amount of sugar in the body because their pancreas is unable to regulate that. So what that sugar that's doing in the body is damaging the cells and to a point where people might need to amputate off limbs because it's been too excessively wow. damaged. So that's just an extreme example of what sugar can do if it's rampant in your body. So I guess with that in mind, we have to think of ways of how we can keep our sugar levels as low as possible so that it can uh, exhibit the least amount of damage on the body. And once again, the, the biggest thing you can do is reduce your frequency of eating. So therefore, intermittent fasting, which I know you're quite uh, familiar with, Freddie. We moved into a subject that I think was a game changer for me. When I was introduced to intermittent fasting and told about it, and I was told I was 10 kilo overweight, and I said, no, I'm not. It's muscle. No. I, was, I ended up dropping 15 kilo. 15 and wow. it's come back on because of muscle and a little bit of fat's come back on because of COVID and the difficulty to get to all the things I was involved in. I was I was um, swimming a kilometre a day. I was uh, working out four times a week and I was going to Pilates on the fifth day and um, yeah, I had it all going on. <laughs> I had several trainers and yeah, I, I was... Uh, striving for um, some world-class attributes. Now I've been set back because of COVID and also because I've decided to devote so much time to get this business on the road. But now I'm attracting people who want to help and get involved and um, I've got some volunteers that are doing some stuff for me out of gratitude for things I've done for them. It's coming together. So I'm not going to go back to being a workaholic. It was a short-term thing and I'll I, I'm at least walking uh, 10 kilometres a day, five days a week. And in that walk, um, there's a lot of sprints in there to make sure uh, I'm, I'm getting the work done. But intermittent fasting, that was a game changer because I found I had more energy. I found that 
a lot of the weight I was carrying was causing a lot of the pains I had. So the pain started to dry up and disappear all by themselves. And it wasn't just the pains of the weight on your ankles and your hips and your back, lower back. It's what's going on with your joints because if you're carrying weight, whether you're eating sugar or not, sugar's going on in there because fat and sugar, you know, they're, they're buddies. So when you get lean and you're, you're eating good foods, all of a sudden differences take place in your life and body that you never even expected. So I, I, I now, I was doing the one meal a day thing for a long time. That worked for me. It's amazing you go through phases where you, you know, you go for keto or you go for one meal a day. You, you try all these different things and then you realise, wait a minute, this is a terrain, it's not a process. You've got to walk through the terrain of your life and, and, and realise, hmm, I think, you know, the, the vegan thing for me worked for a while and then it didn't. Um, I may go back to vegan. Nothing's definite or permanent. I notice as you go through different ebbs and flows and stages, you've got to keep adjusting. You've got to keep facing into what you're doing. So mm -hmm. the fasting mm -hmm. will stay with me. It's sensible. Um, yeah, uh, my first meal's around about uh, late lunch, you know, one o'clock, something like that. I eat before eight o'clock and that's it, I'm done. Now, um, occasionally I'll have a breakfast so I don't go nuts. Um, you talk about the sugar. So for mm -hmm. me, I, um, I guess my hit's dark chocolate. I, have, I buy those 100 gram lint chili chocolate or something like that, break off two blocks, there's my treat. You know? and, and that chocolate will last me probably a week. And I don't always buy it every week. You know, if I've got it, I've got it. If I haven't, I haven't. Fruit, I've cut right back on because weight and me are old friends. It's very hard for me to keep the weight off. So I, I have blueberries mainly. And when blackberries in season, blackberries and blueberries, because they're the lowest on the glycemic index, then come mm -hmm. raspberries, then come strawberries. Strawberries to me is a lolly, you know. I'll have them occasionally, but they're not going to be part of my weight loss program. But, yeah, so um, certainly the fasting, it's... It's added years to me, I'm sure of it, because I've reversed some. I had some diabetes markers. They've reversed. Um, they yeah. were only uh, pre-diabetes, and uh, fortunately I pulled that down through the in-body scan that uh, we get at Sage Active Clinic where I, uh, I consult down there. So yeah. getting that body scan. By the way, you're welcome to come in for a free scan anytime with me. Happy to hook you up for an in-body scan so you can have a baseline for your metrics. So tell me, um, glycation and autophagy, or however you say it. Um, I, I come across these terms when I started to look into the keto thing, but I, I realised you, you have a, a profound wisdom and knowledge around those aspects. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so those two things I would say are the main phenomenons that you have to be, uh, you know, cognizant of when it comes to uh, anti-aging and health, because they both have very impactful um, effects on, on your health. And we're just talking about sugars. So that's where glycation comes into it. So glycation is pretty much the process of where sugars uh, illicitly binds to different proteins in the body and renders them dysfunctional um, and I guess uh, wreak havoc on the system. So they pretty much deforms the proteins in the body and sort of, yeah, wreaks havoc on them. And I guess that's where sort of the appreciation of where how sugar is so deleterious. And that's a nice word. Deleterious. <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, I guess it, it, it doesn't serve you. It, it's okay. harmful. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, and, and the appreciation comes from the majority of the body that's made out of protein, which is a very, very large mass. Pretty much 
if you ask anyone, you know, is my, is your body made out of largely proteins, fats, or, or water, you know, most likely they will say water, then the next thing will be proteins. So your overall integrity of your health, your body is largely depicted by the integrity of each individual proteins. So if those proteins are constantly under attack via glycation, which is sugars binding to those proteins, then your overall protein count, the integrity of those proteins will be largely reduced and also be diminished. So therefore affecting your overall health. And the second thing is with those proteins, they, they, um, they, I guess with the glycation, sorry, is that they can come endogenously or exogenously. So meaning that those, they create these byproducts called ages. So anti-glycation end products. So when these chemical reaction happens, the glycation, they create these anti-glycation end products. So these ages, ages you, um, mm. you know, funnily enough, and they can be ingested from high heat cooking from a variety of foods, these ages, or they can be created from these attacks of sugar on protein. So what they've shown is animals and organisms live longer, the less ages they have in the body. So I guess there's all these sort of pathways that you can then have a look at in terms of how to reduce those ages that in therefore help you live longer. So sum it up, glycation is pretty much sugars attacking proteins and causing havoc in the body and a large sum of your body's made out of proteins. So that is obviously gonna affect your overall health. Autophagy is actually the opposite. Autophagy is actually in uh, Greek named, it, it translates to self eating. So pretty much uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a process where the body uh, self digest uh, you know, the decrepit proteins, the tissues, um, you know, just these gunk that's floating around and then repurpose those proteins uh, as a substrate for energy. So it is another substrate of energy that your body does under pretty much periods of uh, energy deficit or starvation. And that induction of autophagy alone, just that process kicking into place uh, has been shown to extend the lifespan in these experimental models. Not just because, um, you know, not, uh, not to mention that it pretty much that process alone, uh, I guess, increases the strength and the integrity of the proteins because each individual protein has a finite lifespan. Mm -hmm. Okay, think about that. And sometimes these proteins, they don't make it to the end of the lifespan. They become dysfunctional via sugars and other means prior to that. And then so they pretty much, they could die halfway. So what autophagy does, it, it renews those protein at a more quicker rate. So the more quicker they renew, the stronger they become, the, the, the I guess the more... Um, it improves the integrity and therefore your overall health. So, and the means that we can sort of do, what we can do to augment autophagy is once again, via fasting, via a very potent mean is exercise whilst fasted. And also the certain things you can take to also amplify the autophagic effects as well. Um, and therefore the recycling of those proteins. Wow, yeah. I, I know that um, there's some really great supplements on the market and uh, you know, it's, a, it's a minefield to find out what's true and what's not and uh, what is helpful and what is just um, expensive urine or 
expensive uh, nothing. And then I know that certainly for me, um, I, I'm into things like um, ginger and turmeric and uh, cinnamon for anti-inflammatory and things like that. So I'm, I'm exploring the herbal and natural remedies all the time. But I do get strong recommendations from people like you and Adam and others to say, try this, this is really cool. So what are some of the really super duper supplements out there that people can look into if they want to start to take this journey? Because obviously when you start caloric restriction, uh, fasting, a lot of people say, I'm going to become a vegan. There's such a science behind doing some of this stuff that you can actually really go backwards and hurt yourself. So mm -hmm. there's a benefit there. There's a huge benefit and, and I'm feeling the benefit. But I've had to go forward a couple of steps, go back a couple of steps, wind it off, wind it back in. I mean, you don't want to be a fanatic, but what are some of the supportive supplements that could help uh, this direction? I, I'd like to know as well. <laughs> So I guess we'll lump it in into supplements and compounds because I think that's a, that's a category one in the same. So in terms of compounds and also comes in a supplement that people, most people are already ingesting and one of the biggest antioxidant is coffee. And coffee has so much research on it that if you're not drinking it, then I don't know what you're doing. You probably don't care about your health or... Um, oh, your life. I mean, you know... <laughs> have a coffee. That's it. Or else you might need to reassess why you're not drinking coffee because all the evidence uh, that I've seen stacks for drinking coffee. And, you know, in a general sense, people who they've surveyed, and this was a meta analysis over hundreds and thousands of people, that they found that non coffee drinkers actually die sooner from all cause mortality than coffee drinkers. Mm. And get this, there is an optimal range as well. So the optimal range is two to four cups per day. Two to four? Blow me away. To optimize longevity or yep. at least not die from all-cause mortality or um, anything above that, then I guess sort of does the opposite and then you yeah. start seeing diminishing returns. So there's always a fine balance. So coffee is definitely one of those things. Um, another thing you actually mentioned already is cinnamon, uh, which is such a powerful spice. And I would like to call it as a, a potent anti-glycative agent. Mm. So, and it's so important. Why? Because why is it anti-glycative? Because it's one of the best, uh, I guess, compounds at controlling your blood sugars. And as we just discussed previously, we know what sugars does to the body. So at the extent that you can control that, therefore, it means that the, the, the less than the damage that's done. It's really um, interesting what you just said, and I like to um, offer this. Coffee works great for me. I'm all, all for it. It's a great pre-workout drink, you know, to, to get you sparked. But after two o'clock, I find it's an issue for me to get to sleep. So I like to have my one or occasional two cups. I'll probably go to two cups now that you said it's good for you, that, like that little. But I have them before two, um, 2.33 at the latest, because I want to get to sleep and it does keep me up a little bit. The other thing is I find, um, I thought it was a bit, eh, you know, about quality of coffee. No. Uh, there's impurities and especially in the sachet coffees and things like that. So it's good to get a good grade coffee. And why I came back to the coffee is the cinnamon. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realise you can go to Safeway or Woolies or whatever it is and buy your cinnamon in those little containers. That's not the cinnamon. That cinnamon is actually not so good for you. It's the stick cinnamon. It, it, it's the... Uh, it's the, I forget the name of it. It's an Indian cinnamon. It's quite really cool. Cassia. It's high end. Cassia cinnamon? That's it. Cassia cinnamon. The other type uh, doesn't have the therapeutic benefits. So when I look at things like turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, all those spices, um, I find amazing things. Amazing things. Yeah. Something to be said about, I guess, the quality and the source of these supplements as well. Just yeah. because one study has shown that they're efficacious 
uh, and these are the results, it doesn't mean that if you take the same thing that you'll get the same results yourself because of the, the quality and the, the, the sourcing is very important when it comes to that sort of stuff as well. And, and so, there's profound wisdom about taking this stuff. You just can't rock up, buy all this stuff from the health food store and say, I'm going to plug all this good stuff into me and it's going to sort everything out. No, it has to be applied from, you know, with a bit of wisdom. I, I've actually sought external help with my supplements, people like Adam and others, to give me some insights. And some of the questions, like ashwagandha, is mm -hmm. uh, something that I take. And I cycle in and out of the ashwagandha because I realise <clears throat> I don't want to be codependent on a supplement. I want to enjoy it and have the benefits of it, but I want to feel the effects as well. Otherwise, I'm just not clear why I'm taking it. So if, if I am suffering any uh, dysfunctionality in any way in my body, I do some research and see what supplements are going to support that dysfunctionality at the time. And I find that's a better way to do it rather than just say, I'm going to take all these tablets tonight or crush all this stuff up and have it because um, I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather be wise and um, intelligent about it and apply it in a way that will give me the most leverage. What's your thoughts on that? That's what I say to people that when it comes to supplementation, <laughs> that it doesn't have to be an all or nothing mentality. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are 100% purists and say, I'm just going to live off the land and, you know, and then just pretty much grow my food and all that. Um, I just think this day and age, I don't think that's really a possibility, especially if health and longevity is of your uppermost concern. Um, then there's people that, you know, what I guess you're alluding to is that they go all out and they spend all this money and all they care about is is supplements and you know what's the next hot thing that's shown to to do this and that whereas i think a very more reasonable approach is what i like to call intelligent supplementation mm. so pretty much uh, i guess being very specific with it but in saying that there's supplements that's been shown to work uh, on a variety of organisms and for uh, a general basis and all to, I guess, augment those pathways that we talked about, like glycation and autophagy and lowering blood sugar levels. Um, and there's supplements more like ashwagandha, which are very situational uh, and being a, an adaptogenic, uh, I guess it sort of adapts to your body and stress. And then if it adapts for too long, then obviously it becomes less um, effective so therefore it's something like that where you need to uh, quote unquote cycle whereas there's other things that are very safe for prolonged use so and there's research to show that it is so it's just just depending on what that type of supplement is and what purpose you intend for it will determine if you take it on an ad hoc basis or if you take it every day well you are just such a wealth of information and I, I know over the years that you've profoundly impacted me and um, I'd just like to uh, let the listeners and watchers know that you have your own podcast and you uh, are on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, how can people sort of dock with you and uh, learn more about longevity and anti-aging and there's one thing that we you can't cover everything in a video but uh vu at one stage was uh seeking high level activity in the kickboxing room when i first met him and uh we would go for uh occasional stints up to a thousand steps and i would watch him do the parallel hang out on a pole thing so i i think what people don't realise, it's not just longevity, it's not just health, it's, it's lifestyle, it's being alive and engaged and present to your life. It, it, it's a combination thing. So could you tell us how, how we can learn more about you and uh, maybe sit at your feet and learn some more? Yeah, sure. So I, I pretty much share very freely on my social media channels, which is on my Instagram, my Facebook page, which is uh, at the effortless man. 
I also have a YouTube channel, which I post uh, videos on, on all the topics that we've sort of spoken about um, and also uh, specific supplementations as well. I also have a podcast, which is uh, available on all the major platforms like Google Play, Spotify, uh, Apple iTunes, and that is uh, the, the Effortless Man podcast. And I pretty much use that as a platform to share openly about my current research, things that I'm looking into, things that I think might be prospectively promising and also interviewing all of those people um, that's within that space who I guess have a specialized knowledge um, in, in certain topics. So I've really enjoyed, I guess, those conversations as I've enjoyed tonight's conversation with you. Um, and if you want to connect with me, do uh, do so via uh, those uh, means and um, yeah, and keep the conversation going. Awesome. Well, just for those who are, are inspired and uh, feel a call to action here, uh, we will be posting those links um, in the notes below the video. And if you want to find out more about other health professionals as well as Vu, um, hit us up on our YouTube channel, FKC Health. And thank you for staying with us and listening to this profound information. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Once you get in a room or a conversation with Vu and you ask him the right questions. Oh my God, it, it is a journey. And uh, thank you so much for your time, Vu. Uh, really appreciate it and look forward to doing it again. Likewise. Thanks for the opportunity, Freddie. Absolute pleasure, man. Ciao.